So our mission is to spread information about the drone industry in order to encourage girls to pursue different careers involving drones. We know that many girls may not have much information about the industry or are simply discouraged. We want to do what we can. With that being said, we also want to close the gender gap and create positive representation for women in STEM. We understand the importance of representation and the need for girls to have women to look up to, so we want to ensure the best for our future. Now, what are we doing right now? So right now we're posting articles, interviews, and informational graphics on our Instagram and on our website. We're hosting interviews and making connections. So if anybody here ever wants to be interviewed, just let us know, we'll gladly go ahead and do that with you. We're recruiting more team members and we're spreading the word about our organization. So for our future goals for SOAR, we divided up to short-term goals and long-term goals. So like what Kelsey said, we are studying for our Part 107 exams. So currently six out of the eight girls from SOAR are studying for our Part 107 exams with DESI, with online cl uh, classes and workshops on Mondays. And we also will see if we might take it on the end of the month of November. Uh, next is recruiting younger girls to take over seniors. We're currently looking for underclassmen to help the organization and mission going. Um, expanding our organization. So we firstly want to connect with other youth organizations online and social media, also through um, our own city, San Diego. Uh, next is finalizing our website. We want to start making our website more efficient and cleaner and reiterating back to recruiting younger girls for our, uh, for our, gender, uh, our organization. We want to specifically look for website managers as well. Um, for long-term goals, uh, we want to build a large inclusive community for teenage girls and drones, not only in San Diego, but we also want to spread that more of a inclusive community through SOAR for states and even countries and also chapters. Um, through this, we first wanna do it in our community in San Diego, in our local schools that we also attend, but also branch out to other states. Um, next, we also wanna expand our organization, not only in, I guess, San Diego, but also partnering with other drone-related organizations in states or even countries. And also lastly, drone webinars and education. We wanna start hosting maybe weekly webinars where we can bring in Pro drone professionals from the industry or simply just like freelance drone pilots who are um, being able to expose careers to the girls and also some online workshops uh, for girls to learn how to code a drone, mechanics of a drone, or even being able to help study for their part 107s. So that was just an introduction of ourselves. Uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, if you would love to contact us, we do have an Instagram at she's on rural SD. Or if you feel like you'd like to email us or you know ask any questions, or as Anna Nelly said, if you would like to have an interview, you can email us at she's on rural SD at gmail.com. Uh, we will leave this up so uh, if you guys ask questions. So does anyone have any questions? Thanks so much for uh, your presentation. That was really cool. And thanks so much for answering my immediate question. And that was, what's your handle on, on Instagram? So I will be one of the followers here shortly. Uh, we do have one quick question. And, and that question is, is the goal to earn money with the group or is it to spread awareness and a network? Yeah, we've talked about this as um, as a whole team about whether we want to be, you know, a business or a nonprofit, and we've definitely decided we more want to go like the nonprofit route um, of just like helping girls spread awareness, creating a community rather than like making personal profit for ourselves. Right. Um, we've also looked into the future about like um, getting sponsorships to help girls get like drones or take the part 107s. And right now, six of us um, got our part 107 exams fully paid for by sponsors. So it's not necessarily about making money for ourselves, but like helping the community of girls and drones. That is tremendous. That is tremendous. And again, in your presentation, did you share what grades you are in? Um, I'm a junior. I'm a senior. I'm a senior too. <laughs> I'm also a senior. All right, cool, cool. So we have juniors and seniors, and this is this is excellent. Who are some of the interviews that you've had so far in terms of content and, and subject matter? Do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, so some of my favorite interviews have been Sharon from Women in Drones and also Desi. And 
it's been really good to hear their experiences with the drones and everything, how they got into it. And it's just so cool to hear um, the different ways that one can use a drone. So it could either be a part-time or you could use it for your full-time. Like it could branch out into many different um, workspaces. So that's pretty cool. That's what we cool. learned. So, so um, I don't see any questions now, but that doesn't mean you're done. Just uh, give me a minute there. And what we will do is uh, we'll go over to our um, friends in Ohio so over, and, and, and learn about what they're doing with the public library for crying out loud. So, so this is an opportunity for, um, let me get my screen right here. All right, so, so this is an opportunity for, to, to demonstrate that you don't have to go through school or through, um, uh, or, or this is an alternative to what you ladies did. Uh, but, but who's our spokesperson from uh, Silver Library? Or who wants to be the spokesperson for Silver? That would be me, probably. And uh, Matthew, thanks so much for, for being a part of the call today. And I see the rest of your team popping up. Do you want to introduce the rest of your team so that the audience can kind of know who they need to be looking for in terms of conversations and, and questions? Yeah, so we have um, Wesley Bush. He is our, uh, he's our design engineer. And we have Tristan Ware, he's our, uh, manufacturing engineer and we also have uh we have hunter blake i think his name is on here and he is our uh what are you <laughs> i forget you you're on mute hunter design engineer design engineer thanks <laughs> cool so so i'm really uh i'm anxious to hear how the audience responds to this tremendous story and, and maybe you can just kind of give us a snippet of uh, start with how you guys were formed, where you are, and your interest in, in uh, drones. Yeah, so we first started in late December of 2018. The library had uh, all emailed us, they'd selected us because they knew us before through other programs, like they, they had a robotics program. So we did good in that. So they said, okay, well, let's, let's try them with this drone team. So after our first meeting, we went through, we discussed some things. And after Christmas, we really started to pick up speed and building drones. We went through our first through model, first few models. They didn't fly, you know, they just kind of flopped around. We didn't know what we were doing. But after probably three or four months, we got our first, you know, working drone after a bunch of revisions and different motors. So after we got that done, we, uh, we got near our first competition and it was a scrimmage, but it was the first one they ever had. And uh, we ended up coming second in the scrimmage. And, but we still weren't as good as we are now. And just over the years, we excelled from all of our different versions of drones. Uh, we had over the years, we've gotten three sponsors and uh, those, they've been very helpful, helpful to us because, uh, you know, the drones isn't cheap. Right. So we, we, they're a really big help. And uh, just recently, this year, we ended up uh, finishing this season or last season as the uh, champions, even though it was cut short to COVID, we ended up finishing. So that was our, great. Our actual program is named Drones in School and uh, it's focused on, it's like a very in-depth uh, STEM education program where teams usually from schools have to build their own drones, write portfolios about what they've done in their engineering, uh, present themselves to sponsors to get money in order to buy any equipment, participate in or, uh, competitions. It's uh, more so than just the drone racing. You have to make the drone, you have to get the money to fund it, you have to coordinate your team to build it and all these public relations and other things. So uh, while in those for like first four months, uh, we were figuring out how to work as a team because all of us but Blake are homeschooled. So we learned how to communicate online with Discord uh, and we only actually met in person once or twice a week at the library. We uh, got our portfolio written out, which is something that 
has to be this big 20 page document that is graded by the judges. We have this like triple decker trifold display board that's nice, big and flashy and shows our designs. So uh, we were working on things that were not just the drums. So, so um, th that's a whole bunch right there. So f many of you are homeschooled. Yeah. Uh, and you are uh, operating off of sponsorship funding. Yes. And you won the competition, the most recent competition in your area. And yes. that competition was based on uh, the journal that you kept, as well as the mechanical components of your drone. To describe your drone, what it is, and, and the process of building it. Yeah, we are graded on uh, the engineering merit of the drone, how well uh, our portfolio is written, how well our display is organized, uh, how well our pilots can fly in both third person, like non-FPV capture the flag type events and in just your standard racing with the goggles on. So it tests like a wider range of general engineering prowess. So describe your, your drone and the process of building that drone ah, okay. over time. Um, there is a relatively standard here. I have a commercial model that is pre-built if the light will cooperate with me. <laughs> here we are. Yeah, so it's something of approximately this size. Uh, you buy the components, the primary components, such as the board, the flight controller, uh, the camera, and batteries and motors. But the main thing about this program is that you engineer the frame that it's all held in. And the, this is unique because you have to design it entirely from scratch. It has to be able to hold two like nickel sized payloads and no like those right here. Yeah, Show uh, them Matthew them. should have examples of what they look like. So they're, they're small, yeah. Yeah. about probably about the size of a uh, nickel. But like, n not only do you have like, that prevents you from using a pre-built frame because no pre-built frame is gonna have the uh, structures to hold that in. Right. So you have to learn how to use uh, computer aided design software like Fusion 360 uh, in order to design a drone. And then you have to use slicing software to translate it into a language that a 3D printer can understand and then print it with a 3D printer. And that was our process. We, most of us own 3D printers ourselves. We did not have ones at the library until very recently. Uh, so we learned the ins and outs of how to calibrate printers to get them to be very precise. You have to make the frame very strong, but very light. So we uh, experimented with different materials, eventually settling on this composite called Nylon X, which is a carbon fiber nylon composite material. And you need a industrial ruby tip nozzle in order to print it without shredding up your printer. And it needs to be dehydrated every eight hours or so of use. So it's a pretty exotic material to work with, but it offers unparalleled strength to weight ratios. So like just working with materials like that, uh, and of course the unique constraints of a printer because you have to have support structures and the like and wonder how those influence your uh, frames like look and aerodynamic feel because it leaves rough edges, all sorts of things uh, involving this emergent technology of 3D printing that I think is invaluable to know. Uh, Harold, your mic is muted. How about if I unmute my mic? Uh, someone is asking, uh, what is the cost that sponsors need to cover? How much are you asking for to support your team? We, uh, on most of them, it, it, it depends on the size of the business that we judge upon, but most, most of our sponsors is either between 500 and 700. We have one that donates $750 every year. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, we could do smaller ones if we need to or get more sponsors. But right now, those three sponsors are really just enough that we don't need any more. And, and so the total annual cost would be what? We probably spend maybe $800, $700. Okay. And it depends on the year because more competitions, you know, more registration fees. Depends on what we're right. doing. And so how many people were in the competition that you won most recently? I believe it was either nine or 11 teams. I think it was 11. Okay. And of and those 
were, were they all uh, homeschool teams or do you know were they from schools or just a, a bunch of folks with a love of drones competing? It was all from other schools because, you know, that, that's mostly what this program is. We're kind of the uh, anomaly in it. Okay. All right. Very interesting. So, so I say to the audience that you can understand in preparation for this presentation, it was pretty exciting to hear the, the motivation, the drive, um, the discipline that these uh, two teams, uh, two groups of kids have, have demonstrated in their pursuit to learn more about UAS. Then I guess the next part of the conversation is related to the STEM component of it. What the teams uh, were motivated from STEM and how this may drive where they wanna go as a career. So, so I'll stay with, with our, our friends in Ohio and we can probably start with Wes. Wes, what's your interest in you know, pursuing, I know you still got a little time left, I'm not trying to rush, but from a career perspective, what's your interest? I am definitely looking into continuing to do drone racing slash engineering in some capacity, whether through like a collegiate team or um, to pursue that overall just in higher education engineering. But uh, regardless of whichever, I, I haven't really decided yet, but regardless of which direction I go, I know that uh, a lot of the stuff that I learned here will definitely be applicable. Right, right. Blake, I know we had a, a brief conversation last night. I think you are the junior member of the team, if I'm not mistaken, your 10th grade? Or 10th what? grade, sophomore. Sophomore. So, so again, what role do you play and, and how, have, how has this experience influenced you? What are you interested in terms of Pursuing well, an additional study career. I'm the design engineer and spotter on my team, but I'm also on a robotics team at my school, where I am the um, engineering notebook writer as well. So I'm really into like the documenting stuff and like keeping everything organized and whatnot. So that's why I'm more focusing on engineering, but forensics engineering, because that involves a lot of documenting and keeping everything organized. So I feel like that's definitely the job I want to go for as a forensics cool. engineer. So how did you get interested in robotics and drones and engineering? What, what, was the, what were some of the things? Were you a, a Lego person or what, what was your interest to start? Well, I have never played with Legos, but when I was like, I forget what year it was, but several library sent out email. They had a VEX IQ program at the cell okay. the library and I said okay that's pretty interesting I'll go join and once I got there I went through I was like I actually really enjoyed that so I did that I finished their program there but that's when also which was seventh grade is when we um, the middle school allowed us to join a robotics team there so I joined there and I've been doing robotics for VEX EDR robotics for seventh eighth ninth and tenth grade tenth grades cool Cool. my four feet of robotics in a row. Oh, wow. Wow. Tristan, you've been quiet over there. What's going on in, you, in your world? What role did you play on the team and how has it influenced your thoughts around STEM? Well, I really just like to work with my hands and um, I guess design the drones and build them. So I mainly for a career path, I kind of just want to work with robots and um, so I can't really think of it for some reason right now. So when when the when it's the uh, yellow screen around your box, yeah, I understand. I'll come back to you. Meanwhile, I want to know from Matt who designed the cool shirts and how does uh, STEM how did STEM influence your life? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, our original logo design here was uh, designed by Wesley. And uh, we just had, we uh, sent those off to the printing place and they made the shirts, so. Yeah. But Wesley made the whole design. Wes, you're showing out over there, pal. Nicely yeah. done. <laughs> and uh, m my main interest right now is engineering in general. I've always liked like electrical engineering and anything mechanical. I've, I've been mechanically inclined my whole life. and. This has really been helping me with that and 
even in school, I'm learning CAD now, and this has helped me because I've already learned a lot of CAD. Cool. And also in this whole thing, it got me really into flying. And through an opportunity through our uh, one of our sponsors, I was able to get a scholarship for my full private pilot's license or planes. And uh, that's, that's really cool. I mean, I, if I didn't get into drones, I wouldn't have ever gotten that opportunity. Very cool. Very cool. And, and you said planes, not drones. What, what plane are you uh, learning to fly? Just a smaller Cessna type planes, you know, real, real small Cessna 150 type yeah, size. So, well, well, gentlemen, thanks for that. I'm going to put you on hold here while we go back to uh, She's on a Roll. And, and Kelsey, I want to kind of visit with you and your team to try to understand similarly. Um, so STEM, why? What, what introduced you, Kelsey, to STEM? And where do you want to participate going forward? Yeah, I mean, I've been on an all-girls robotics team for like six years. I've been in STEM for like all of my adolescence, basically. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've just been in STEM for a long time. And like robotics is really what like, I don't know, like made me develop the love for STEM. And my robotics team is actually at the same um, organization that Girls Take Flight was at. So that's how I found out about like drones and Girls Take Flight. So it all kind of like morphed together um yeah but in the future i definitely want to like continue with drones i don't know about doing drones as like my full-time job but definitely as like a hobby um or doing like volunteer work with drones or those kinds of things but um for like a career i want to do robotics and maybe artificial intelligence or like something like that nice no nice. <laughs> so so leah uh how about you where, where do you fit into um, STEM, drones, UAS, how, how has that inspired your thinking going forward? Um, so, <laughs> to be completely honest, I did not know drones would have, like, so much, like, jobs and all that stuff. I thought it was just, like, flying, like, you know, a little toy, like, in a park. But, like, honestly, um, I come from a more of a medical field kind of background. Most of my family are doctors or, like, nurses in a way. So I always had an interest in the healthcare field. But I had, like, I really wanted to branch out that kind of interest in STEM in a way because I felt like um, I just I was just really curious about other things in STEM. So I kind of just found out about drones and I'm not really an engineering type person, but I kind of what I fell in love about drones is that it had it, it's really in like various like fields of jobs and it just implemented in there and really helps. Um, but I found out that drones actually are in the medical field for drone delivery. And I thought that was just very like mesmerizing and awed by it because how could like a little drone that I thought could help save other lives? So that is, yeah, that is why I'm really interested in drones. But I think for me personally, I would like to do it as a side, like I would do it as like, kind of what Kelsey said, like I won't really pursue it, but I would do it like in a side job in a way. Got it. So did you see the zip line presentation earlier, the tour, wasn't that pretty cool? Yeah, I saw like a little bit of it. Of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you want to see the whole thing. It's pretty fascinating. So Rahama, uh, where, where are you in, in STEM? What interests you? How did you get into it? Um, where do you think it goes long term for you? Um, I think I've always kind of been introduced this, or I was really like people have really pushed like my school and my family have really pushed STEM on me. Um, I know that my dad works with uh, computers a lot. I've always I've grown up watching him fix computers and coding all of that um, and he's very into coding now. My older brothers are in college and they're both um, I have two older brothers and they're both majoring in uh, like something involving STEM so I've kind of always been surrounded by you know STEM. Um, I've never been in a robotics team, Kelsey has, but I've been in a lot of classes involving it. So I've been in computer science for the past two years. I was in an engineering class uh, my sophomore year. So I call it, I've kind of always known about it and been around it. Yeah. Um, in terms of drones, I think as Leah had said, um, I I didn't really realize how much the drones were able to do and how much like versatility it had. So I think learning about drones more through a flight 
and through even through SOAR, I think really uh, it, it encouraged me to like want to pursue it a little bit more. Um, I think even though we didn't really get to fly it much during the Rose flight because of our, you know, it was very short lived and you know, it got canceled early, earlier, as we said. Um, but I think we got a chance to fly at the AME field with Desi. And so that was really fun and I really enjoyed flying it. So I think in terms of like long term, I'm, I'm considering uh, using it for maybe photography, photography or cinematography, something along those lines, or I'm not sure, but. Cool, that sounds fun. Ananali, um, how about you? And I hope I said your name okay. You said it perfectly. <laughs> thank you. So, so how long have you been in STEM? What interests you? Where do you want to go with STEM? Okay, so up until my junior year throughout uh, freshman year, sophomore year, and like the beginning of junior year, I had never been introduced to a program that was STEM based. So I was always doing other stuff, whether it was uh, activism, whether it was singing or um, doing plays, I was all around these different fields until my junior year when I was introduced to the program Girls Take Flight. And it was, it was shocking to me. It was a new experience for me. And I knew I wanted to go forward with it because I had never felt any other type of adrenaline that I had felt with the other type of fields that there are. So that's when I knew that I really wanted to stick with the STEM. Okay. And then during Girls Take Flight, when we were um, learning to build these miniature drones, I, I started to realize that I wanted not to not only be in STEM, but to be in engineering because I really liked the way the process was to build the drone even though it was only like a small little one day workshop it really interested me yeah which then led me to um wanting to build up this organization she's on a roll and then that led me to joining another program called high school um students engineering program and it's it's really cool i'm learning about the different fields so my goals for the future is to either become a mechanical engineer or um and industrial engineer, but I'm still um, choosing between those two, but yes. Good options to have. So, so in terms of um, pursuing your part 107, are you looking for sponsors? And I'm asking both teams this. Are you looking for sponsors to help pay for the test? Or what use of sponsors do you have? And what's the total amount that you would be asking to support that initiative? Yeah, mm -hmm. right now our tests are fully paid for by sponsors. Um, so yeah, we had sponsors help us pay for the test because initially Girls Take Flight um, would have paid for the test. So that was kind of like the biggest barrier for us with getting our um, Part 107s. But yeah, we have sponsors paying for all of them right now. And, and Wes, how about you and, and, and your guys? I think we asked that question, but I just want to make certain that I don't leave anything unasked. Wes, Matthew, you, you guys are looking for sponsors to assist in your Part 107 or you got that covered? Well, right now we're not necessarily actively looking to get PARA 107 licenses right now. We might in the future, but you know, right now we're just saying with the small stuff indoors, but you know, maybe in the future. Yeah, but I mean, not, not at the moment. Okay, fair enough. So, so I want to make sure that our audience has time to ask questions. So if there's something that you'd like to ask, uh, just uh, type away and uh, I'll catch it on the Q&A screen and we can kind of go from there. In the, in the meantime, I'll ask, and, and Ken, I know you came on, did you want to ask something or were you just letting us know you were there? I actually wanted to ask the girls a question. Sure. Um, so um, you guys are doing the part 107. Apparently that um, causes uh, some teachers some concern. So is the part 107 a difficult process or do you think it's a, a very manageable um, uh, program? So right now we're having workshops and we're having like class days on hours that are like around in the afternoon. So usually our classes start like around four or five. So it's all about time management. If you're able to manage your time with your classes and with your other extracurricular activities, if like if you really want it, if you really want your part 107, you would put the time in for it. So that's what we're all doing right now. And on top of that, we're also going to start meeting on Saturdays because we want to take our exam in the next two weeks. So hopefully everybody 
as the audience give us the shout out of good luck because we really <laughs> want really need that hopefully we pass you know but so once you have it what are you going to do with it so once i have it um it's probably going to just sit in my wallet for the next uh, <laughs> two three months until i'm able to um so one of my mentors lets me borrow their drone so i can go fly it <laughs> Because as of right now, like, I don't have a drone. The other girls don't have a drone. So we're just, um, we just wanted to have it so that later in the future, we'll have it, like, with us. So if we ever do plan on buying a drone, we could use it outdoors. So you guys are not considering competitions of any sort? I don't think we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in, like, college or later on, we'd be interested in that. But, yeah, not right now. Because it seems like the, the boys team could use some girls. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see a competition between the two teams at some future date. I think that's fun. That will be a completely unfair competition. Yeah, we've only flown once. <laughs> Already been flying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm getting a couple of notes that are saying that people who are older in age and no numbers are necessary for that have, have uh, uh, taken their part 107 and couldn't be happier. They're really jealous that you're doing it at such a young age. So uh, you, you have a lot of fans over here. So keep the good work up. <laughs> there you go, Lena. Do it. Do it. So. Um, if there are no other questions, I just want to thank you for uh, taking part of your Saturday. Um, well, I've got a few more questions. Okay. So um, for the boys, um, your, your competition is a design competition? Partially. Uh, it measures the design of your drone, how um, well it flies, like in a direct race, and also your, the quality of your presentations and engineering portfolios. And we, we learned in the beginning that uh, the presentation portfolio were very important because when we first started, it's like, oh, we're just, it's a racing thing. If we do good on the drones, we're going to do good on everything. But we learned at our first real competition, we, we didn't do very good on our display and you know, we didn't put a whole lot of effort into it. And we ended up getting fifth. We got second in flying, but we got fifth overall because our display wasn't very good because we didn't take it that seriously. Yeah, and, and the main purpose that the display serves is just as evidence of all the back end work that you've done to get your drone to this point. Like um, how you've improved, how you've tested things, how your team communicates. It just describes all that in those uh, papers. It's. Um, where did Mav go? Maverick. Is Maverick still there? Doesn't look like he's there. No, he's been there the whole time and then just disappeared. Oh, no. Um, did, did he say anything to you by chance or? Marissa? No, I was waiting to hear him speak. Let's see. Yeah, um, so Mav, Maverick is a, a student who is working with Marissa down in um, Austin, and he um, got his 107 um, uh, certification, and he immediately went into business. Um, and so I think he's He's 16 and he went into business of its own and uh, started taking pictures for, I don't know, uh, real estate companies or something along those lines. Yes, uh, and, and hopefully he'll be able to get on. He just sent me a message that his internet cut out. That's, that's where he went. Oh, uh, whoops. And he has a really great story and his is a little bit different than the other students in that he has... Um, and an illness that prevented him from playing football. And you know, Texas football is big. So he began, flying, yeah, he began flying drones. And basically he started a program 
um, here in Dripping Springs, just outside of Austin, and they do all of the film for the football practices and, and games. And um, he has a lot of students and, and he has now graduated. I believe he's at Harding University, but like I said, hopefully he can get on to share. And, um, and he basically on the side did it more as a volunteer, but would do some photography and, and um, really just started a neat program. And, and what I really like about Maverick's story is he was able to, um, you know, instead of just being bummed out because one of his, his hobbies was no longer something he could do, he incorporated that into drones and film and, and learning to fly. Um, I look forward to hearing about that. That's a fabulous story. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. hopefully he'll be on again. But um, that is certainly something you SOAR girls might be interested in doing. Don't just get your um, part 107. There's, there's a lot of interest in people who have that. I highly recommend you. And when I was a high schooler, I was always looking for ways to make money. Um, but uh, you can work for real estate agents. You can, um, you can do um, all kinds of, of, of like summer camps and other types of things like that um, if you're interested. So I wouldn't just sit on the, your part 107. If you're going to go through the whole effort of, of paying for it and getting it, then I would definitely um, do something with it. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So um, we're all probably on planning on going to university. So it would be like nice to have a part-time job with drones and having them by our sides. Like whenever we want to go out and like look for a job, we, we have that as a tool to lure people in. <laughs> um, yeah, and and you could you could still continue to work as a team and I highly recommend you do. And somebody maintains your website and somebody maintains the, um, the client uh, schedule and somebody does the flying. And yeah, there's, there's a lot that you guys could do as a team uh, that would be a lot better and easier than um, just as an individual. Looks like Maverick. And Ken and Harold, oh, pardon, pardon me. It looks like Maverick has joined us. He said that Wi-Fi is down for his entire campus, so he was able to hop on on his phone. Uh -oh. So before he lose connection, let's let's go to Maverick. Hey, Maverick. Hello, how are you doing? Doing well, sir. Uh, we uh, Marissa kind of gave us an overview, but we would love to understand how you got into drones and what kind of business you started and how you're enjoying yes. it. Yes, well, um, like, I, like you said, uh, my name is Maverick Walker. Um, I'm a freshman in college at Harding University. Um, I started to get into drones probably about my sophomore year of high school. Um, I was helping out the football team at the time. And, you know, a big problem was uh, how we – filmed our practices and uh you know how what equipment we used for that and at the time we had a coach who had heard about other schools using um drones to film practice and uh so our high school t football team bought a few drones um at the time while i was helping and i kind of helped start that uh and now, you know, it became, we got, as we got bigger and bigger, um, we were able to buy more drones. Um, we were always very fortunate about uh, having funding to be able to buy these drones, um, uh, to be able to film practice. And not only was it, you know, the football team being able to use it, but we would also have our you know, CT programs like our engineering department in our high school could do um, repairs and updates for us um, and on site. So that was another cool thing that we were able to do. Um, but I also, in the middle of that, I fell in love with drones and, you know, I saw a huge opportunity that I think I could use later in life. So I started a uh, business called Maverick Aerial Video and um, my kind of goal you know as in college as well I'm uh, seeking a business degree um, 
to see how I can use drones in the business field and use them to my advantage. Very cool. Well, what type of drones do you fly? Uh, so we use uh, Mavic series from DJI, um, the Mavic Pro, the Mavic 2 Pro, um, those, uh, those, those were the drones that we were given. So for the most part, they just have a camera attached or what other attachments do you have with them and, or any other modifications you've had to make? Correct. So we actually, you know, we straightly use them for their filming purposes, um, which was a completely a game changer for uh, our coaching staff as, as it was a complete different field of view, obviously, from the air of, you know, how our team does things, how they run plays. So it completely changed the way that they analyze film and they, uh, they um, prepared for games as well. So, so as, as they engage you to, to record their practices, is that, how did you have to stage that? Do you have a couple of different drones that you're alternating or did the battery life last? Or are you the only ones doing this or do you have someone else given an offensive view? Is there a defensive view? Uh, give us a little idea about how that works out. How do you use plan? Yeah, so, so of course, as, you know, it started real small. You know, we just got one, the original Mavic Pro. And then, um, you know, there was a small group of us and then a small group of us managers who, you know, slowly started to learn how to use it, you know. And then as I got older, I recruited more kids to help me, you know. And eventually by my senior year, I had about 10 of us who was on the team and we had four drones at our disposal, um, you know, three Mavic Pros and one Mavic 2 Pro um, at our disposal. Um, like I said, you know, money was a very, not a problem for us, which we were very fortunate of. Uh, our football team was very generous on helping us because they were very committed to it. Um, but, you know, we would have, say, in any given practice, we would have two drones or sometimes even three uh, and at different parts spaced out of the field and we could film different areas uh, simultaneously and then upload that film to these websites uh, like Huddle, uh, you know, a video managing software and our whole team can replay and view those at any given point in time. So, so these, your, your crew of 10, they are all primarily defined as student managers. Correct. Now that you're no longer in high school, have you hired any of those 10 to kind of help you with your for-profit project or are you uh, training new members to be part of your team? Um, so kind of as I, I was, so here's also another thing. I was going to take my part 107 in May, but COVID happened and that kind of put a, a pause on that. So I probably won't, uh, expand much on my business until I get that part 107 just because okay. of legal issues but uh and make sure I'm doing everything by the book but um no those a lot of those kids were still uh younger than me so they carried on the program they are still there right now I still help and every now and then they'll call me and ask me some questions yeah. but Definitely, they were committed, and they are keeping it going, and so I'm really uh, happy to see what they've uh, carried on. Excellent. That, that is a tremendous story. So Did you get your hand is... slapped by FAA? What was that? Did you get your hand slapped by FAA? I have not, actually, <laughs> but I'm, that's what I'm trying to prevent, so that's why I'm <laughs> Before I do anything else with my business, I want to make sure that I have my part 107. That's good. It seems like they know a lot that's going on and they, they like to slap hands. Yes, yes, that's why I, I uh, 
I want to make sure everything's by the book. So. So you guys are in a no fly zone. I mean, in a, in a, in a, yeah, there's no airports around. No, there we're in a, there is nothing around us for 20, 30 miles at least probably more than that, honestly. Um, but you know, we, it was where we were flying was safe. Um, so as far you as I know, little, um, uh, app that tells you if you're in a, yeah. So, so if you, I don't know any, I don't know if any of y'all have used a, uh, any DJI products, but I really recommend if you're trying to get into any type of uh, commercial um, filming or just really good recreational flying, um, DJI products are the top of the line, I would say, especially the Mavic uh, models. Um, they have in their app their, their own feature where it'll tell you if you're not supposed to fly and it actually will not let you fly it will not let you take off if you're in a no-fly zone. So, and it's constantly updated every day uh, per FAA guidelines. Very cool. Have you had a chance to work with any of the drone pilots in the, um, like the uh, fire department or police or anything like that? Um, I have not. Um, I have had multiple conversations with uh, some of our fire department and how they um, use their drones and how they just recently got into stuff, um, start, started using their drones, um, which I had no clue about, uh, um, which was a whole nother side of the drone world that I figured out was there, um, which was the law enforcement and, you know, first responders and how they use drones to do rescues and analyze situations. I would think that out where you are, they may have like volunteer fire departments that um, could sure use a drone or two. Kirk, yes, yes. Another reason why I am eager to get my part 107. Pretty cool. Well, um, again, I, I don't want to uh, rush things, but if I'd love to hear if there are additional questions from our audience, uh, because this has been really cool for me to talk to some really smart people who are way ahead of the game, because I think I was just sitting on a weekend watching football in, you know, in, in a similar time in, the, in my life compared to theirs. But this is very cool. Uh, there are a couple, couple of other opportunities, I suppose, that are interesting when you look at how coding can be incorporated with a lot of the, the UAS opportunities in terms of data collection, data analysis, data presentation. But for the most part, the first thing is you got to get the thing up in the air to, to fly. And it sounds like in each of these three scenarios, there are some very unique opportunities to learn from those who've been there in the past to actually get your hands on and, you know, as they're doing in middle of Ohio, working at least for the most part from home and there's one in public school. So you're doing this from a distance as well as in a pandemic and being successful at it. And then you're being very innovative and entrepreneurial starting as a sophomore and now you're in college. Um, once you get your 107 successfully, you know, creating jobs and providing a service. So these are all great examples of how kids, high school students, college students are getting engaged in this space. I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I think you can reach out through Ken to, to the teams and to 